It's been 55 years since Ford shocked the world with the original 1964 Mustang, and I'm here at the 2019 LA Auto Show where they're looking to shock the world again with this vehicle. This is an all-electric Mustang known as the Mach-E. It's capable of zero to 60 sprints in the mid threes, and Ford says it'll go up to 300 miles of range on a full charge. Let's take a first look. Now, as the all-electric member of the Mustang family, you're probably going, wondering what's going on underneath the hood. Now, obviously, there's no motor here because this is not a gas-powered car. Instead, Ford gives you a fairly large frunk. They say it measures just under five cubic feet of space. It's also washable, so you could theoretically use this as a cool box. It's about the same size as what you're gonna find from some competing Tesla vehicles. Now, in terms of propulsion, Ford will offer several different options. They're there will be about five different trim levels. The base standard range model will go up to 210 miles on a full charge. It'll offer around 282 horsepower. If you guys go for this one, this is the one the enthusiasts are gonna to wanna to go for because the GT offers up to 459 horsepower and you should be capable of doing a zero to 60 sprint in around three and a half seconds. This GT model will go about 250 miles uh, on a full charge. Ford says a special California Route Edition one will go about 300 miles on a full charge. So that is very competitive numbers uh, that will be matching the best that you can get from Tesla with their Model Y. Now, when you put the running horse on the front end of any vehicle, you're gonna bet that a lot of the Mustang enthusiasts are going to judge the vehicle very hard on the looks. As you can see, when I first saw the pictures of the Mustang Mach-E, I was a little bit torn on the looks, but seeing it in person, especially in this grabber blue with the GT trim, it's a gorgeous vehicle. It really will attract a lot of heads for it being looking futuristic and just looking like a Mustang. It, ha it has the Mustang inspired DNA that you kind of expect. The GT version has its own unique front fascia with this grill area here that has kind of like a textured look where it almost looks like it has functional air intakes. There's actually no holes here at all in the front grille. You can see these full LED headlights are very slim, but they kind of look a little bit like the current generation S550 body style Mustang. They are full LED headlights. The GT also has a little bit more of a sculpted front end with the black finish here with the functional air intakes. I think it's a gorgeous looking car that will attract a lot of stares when this thing does go on sale. Now, in terms of the overall platform, Ford says this is riding on its own unique platform. Uh, it's a specifically designed battery electric vehicle platform that Ford developed specifically for this vehicle. But if you look at the actual proportions, it is roughly about the same size as a Mustang at 187 inches long. Its wheelbase is what's stretched. It's about 117 17 inch long, long in the wheelbase. So it is a much longer wheelbase, but looking at the rest of the proportions here with the greenhouse, you can see it has a traditional kind of SUV look where it looks like the swoopy coupe like SUV. But you can see here with this black portion here, it's actually not quite as sculpted as I thought it was, which will translate to more headroom in the back seats. Now this GT model here also has these 20 inch wheels riding on 235 width tires. That's the same size tires as you're gonna find on a Tesla Model 3 Performance. You can see the brakes are also upgraded on the GT with these red painted calipers, slightly larger uh, brake rotors. And overall, let me know what you think below in the comments because I think this is one stunningly gorgeous car that Ford did a really good job with, you know, infusing with that Mustang inspired uh, DNA. Now at the rear of the vehicle, you can see you can find the Mustang DNA loud and proud here at the back. These three LED taillights right here with this additional you know, horizontal strip, the GT badge over here. This is one attractive looking SUV that I think will do extremely well for Ford. Now opening up the trunk area of this vehicle, a power lift gate obviously is going to be included. Now Ford already had some numbers to share in terms of the cargo capacity. You're going to get around 29 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Fold them down, you get around 59 cubic feet of space. That's matching what you're going to get from a lot of compact crossover SUVs. So again, you're not sacrificing practicality in the name of performance and the efficiency you get with a full EV. Now, because the Mach-E is an entirely new idea from Ford, they even redesigned the door handles with getting into this vehicle. Now, just like you expect from a Tesla, you can also use your phone as the key. It's the first Ford model to introduce the Bluetooth capability where you can just have your phone on you, it'll unlock the car. And when you wanna get into the vehicle, you can see very interesting looking door handle. Instead, you just push this top button over here that kind of electrically actuates the door to pop out. And then you just grab this area here and open the door. The rear has the same philosophy, but there is no handle for the door. Instead, Ford says that when you push the button here to open the rear door, a lot of small ch children are getting back here, so you can kind of just get your hand in here and just open the door to finish getting into the vehicle. Now getting inside the interior of the Mustang Mach-E, I have to say, this feels roomier than I thought it would considering how small the vehicle looks on the outside. It feels spacious, yet it still has some of the Mustang design cues here. Obviously it has a unique steering wheel with the Mustang 
running horse in the center of it. It still kind of has that dual cowl design to the dashboard and Ford really copied Tesla a lot here with this interior, which is not a bad thing because it's very clean. It's very minimalistic. You have two massive screens. The big one here obviously is the 15.5 inch uh, next generation sync infotainment system. You also have a smaller 10 inch display here as an instrument that as an instrument panel right in front or right behind the steering wheel. I think that Tesla should consider adding a screen like this to the Model 3. It makes the interior again feel very clean very modern. Now in terms of materials, the materials in here are actually not bad considering this is a very fragile hand-built prototype. You can see the dashboard here is actually a, uh, a speaker. Ford says this is the part of the BNO audio system where this speaker here is kind of like a soundbar. It floats over the top of the dash. It's a hard touch you know, covered material here uh, on this upper portion. Down here you have genuine stitching with some aluminum look trim. Um, the glove compartment over here is hard touch. But again, this is just a pre-production prototype model. So I'll have to wait until I actually drive one before, until I sit in a final production model to give my final judgment. Now the door panel is actually stitched with leather here on the upper portion with more leather here on the actual uh, armrest area. The seats are also very comfortable. I really like the way they look. They kind of remind me a little bit of Lincoln with their perfect position seats, kind of have the how they have these big aggressive bolsters, um, the suede Alcantara, but obviously the star of this interior is going to be this head unit. Now I'm trying to wrap my head around this because this is the first time that I'm seeing the head unit. There's actually a volume knob, uh, a, a physical volume knob here at the very bottom of the screen. Uh, and this screen itself is massive. Now Ford asked me not to play around too much with this screen because this is again, an early production prototype model. But as you can see here, Ford really did it right. Now with this screen, you're gonna have features like wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that's something you can't get on a Tesla. And it also will include over the air software updates. Ford said that will be coming. So their full self-driving will also be coming for this vehicle. Ford says that their hands-free self-driving will be added later as an over the air software update. So they're really thinking again about range. They're thinking about connectivity. They're thinking about you know your smartphone integration. Now again, another thing that people really love about Tesla's is their panoramic sunroofs. And Ford has also delivered with this Mach E. Check this out. It is massive. It goes all the way to the back seats and Ford says they've also coated it with a special UV coating to help block out those sun rays. So even though there's no shade for this, you're not going to need it because the coating that they put on it has really blocked it out. Over here at the center stack, you can see there's a wireless phone charger here, two large cup holders, plenty of storage, USB over there. And then your transmission selector is this rotary dial over here. This car also has automatic parallel parking. There's some nice leather stitching here. This is a really fascinating cabin. It'll be interesting to see how Ford delivers this when it starts going on sale. But let's hop into the back seat because I do want to check out that rear seat area for the uh, headroom space. So moving to the rear seat of the Mustang Mach-E, you do have to duck your head a little bit because of this sloping roof line. But once you get back here and shut the door, there is a surprising amount of headroom back here. I mean, I'm not very tall, but I could say that a six foot tall person could probably fit back here without rubbing their head. Legroom seems very generous as well. They don't have official numbers yet, but it kind of feels like what you're gonna get in something like a Honda Civic or any, any other compact car. I love the fact that the floor is completely flat back here. You have rear seat air vents, USB charging ports, and then there's also a nice little armrest here that folds down that gives you uh, two cup holders. So again, as a family vehicle that has the Mustang name in it, you could actually use the back seats and you know sell this to your spouse, especially if you guys are looking to get rid of your Mustang because you needed more space. Now Ford says the all new Mustang Mach-E will be headed to your local Ford dealerships by the summer of 2020. Now keep in mind, if you guys are looking to be one of the early adopters, you're gonna have to be settling with the first edition or the premium models. This GT version won't be available until the spring of 2021. And the Mustang Mach-E is going to have a very competitive starting price, starting at a base price of around $44,000 for the base version with the 210 mile range, Go all the way, going all the way up to about $60,000 for this GT version. That is right in line with Tesla's Model why, which the two vehicles should be coming out right around the same time period. But I think with Ford, what they offer it obviously is the Mustang heritage. Although a lot of you may balk at the fact that Ford put the Mustang name on an SUV like this, you can clearly see it's got Mustang inspired DNA in the way it looks. And as long as it drives and handles and performs like a Mustang, which this one, zero to 16 in around three and a half seconds, matches that of the Shelby GT500 that I drove last month in Las Vegas. Now keep in mind, if you guys are looking to buy this car, Ford is opening up the reservation books right now. So you can put a $500 deposit on their website and then already build this car and be one of the early adopters to take delivery of this thing. But I think that once it does go on sale, a lot of people are going to be really excited. It's going to be a hot new addition to the ever growing and ever competitive EV SUV segment. For Redline Reviews here at the 2019 LA Auto Show, I'm Sophie Bay.